Okay, so we're looking at interactions and we want to look at something called fundamental interactions. So an, act, an interaction is fundamental if it cannot be explained in terms of other interactions. So what does it mean to explain an interaction in terms of other interactions? So here's an example. So now you have two carts, okay, and they, and they collide, boom. Um, that's an interaction. But this interaction between the carts can be described by, a, by the, uh, the interaction between the atoms. The atoms of this cart and the atoms of this cart are interacting. Well, that's not fundamental because it can further be described by the interaction between the nuclei of the atoms and the electrons. That's a further interaction which can describe that interaction. However, this is still not a fundamental interaction because even within the nucleus we have, we have another interaction which holds the nucleus together which is called the strong interaction. Okay, And what we find is we can't further break down or, de or describe this kind of interaction by another interaction. Okay. So, an interaction is fundamental if it cannot be explained in terms of other interactions. So now, uh, in the universe we have four fundamental interactions. We have four of these. And these are gravitational interaction, electromagnetic, weak and strong interaction. So we're quite familiar with these two. Maybe we're not so familiar with these two. Let's have a look at them briefly. Okay, so the gravitational interaction is, any, is an interaction between objects that have mass. Okay, so that is, that is the attribute of this kind of interaction. Two objects that have mass would have this kind of attraction. Okay. It is long range, especially when we consider, um, you know, uh, the uh, stuff on the cosmic scale. It's long range. Okay. And now, it is mediated by a gauge particle called the graviton, although it is still undetected. So um, I'm thinking of doing another video on gauge particles and the standard model, maybe to just further explain what these are. However, the, the ga gauge particle, gauge bosons, are basically particles that carry any of the fundamental interactions. Okay? So these fundamental interactions each have something called a gauge particle. Gauge particle. And these particles carry this force. It carries this interaction. However, these three, th for the electromagnetic, the weak and the strong, these have all been detected and discovered. However, the graviton, which is for the gravitational uh, interaction, has not been discovered yet. It's still undetected. Okay. But I'll see if I can make a video on this on the standard model, which explains... Um, which explains fermions, bosons, it explains uh, quarks, leptons, um, things like that. Okay? The standard model. Okay. The gravitational interaction, believe it or not, is the weakest fundamental interaction. For example, you're sitting next to, say, your, your calculator or your cell phone. You don't feel the interaction between you and your cell phone. Although there is one, but it is the weakest of all the interactions. Um, it is only start, it's only starts to become appreciable when the objects become extremely massive, like the sun, like the earth. So you can feel the attraction of the earth, um, and the earth can feel the attraction of the sun, 
etc. So on a cosmic scale, this is the interesting thing though, is that on the cosmic scale, on the cosmic scale, although it is the weakest, it is the only one that still plays a role at the cosmic scale. Okay? That's also due to the fact that the other interactions, uh, I'll get to that in a minute, they kind of cancel out on the cosmic scale. And so the only interaction that, that um, determines the structure of the universe really is this gravitational interaction. Okay? Now, the next one is electromagnetic interaction. So I just want to repeat here, for the gravitational interaction, the attribute is mass, its gauge particle is the graviton, it's the weakest fundamental interaction, and it, what does it do? It attracts all objects that have mass. Okay, uh, sorry for repeating. Electromagnetic interaction is another fundamental interaction. It is responsible for almost all that happens around us. What do we mean by that? It is responsible for the structure of atoms and molecules. Okay? It is responsible for chemical processes, biological processes, repulsive interaction between objects like a bat and a ball. When the bat hits the ball, okay, these are the repulsive interactions between these two objects. It's responsible for light. So it's responsible for almost everything that happens around us. Its attribute responsible, the attribute responsible is electric charge, both positive and negative. Okay? So in the same way that the attribute for gravity was mass, the attribute for this interaction is electric charge. And the gauge particle is the photon. So the photon carries electromagnetic interactions. The photon carries electromagnetic interactions. All right. Okay, what's the next one? Weak interaction. These are interactions that act inside the nucleus between subatomic particles, like quarks, for example. Okay. It is responsible for decay, for radioactive decay and the conversion of hydrogen to helium in stars. Only effective at short distances. The attribute required is the weak charge inside the nucleus. And the gauge uh, particles are these W and Z bosons or vector bosons. Okay, these are the particles that carry this kind of interaction. Then, finally, we have the strong interaction. This also acts inside the nucleus between the subatomic particles. And it is responsible for quarks binding together to form hadrons, which are the protons and the neutrons. As I said, if you, if you do a brief study of the standard model, you can have a better understanding of what this is. Okay. Um, the attribute required is called the color charge and the gauge particle is the gluon. Okay. Sounds like something out of Star Trek. Okay. I think that's good enough for now. I will see you in the next video.